What a way to end. I just want to thank you very much for coming. I am Matthew the disciple. I mean, I am Pastor Whitmer. And uh, so glad to see all of you here on Resurrection Sunday, just worshiping the Lord, just really from what God has given us, the declaration of his word, us building our lives upon it, that Jesus Christ is truly the Savior, that he truly died for our sins, that he truly came up out of that grave, and he is alive. And we are, we are basing our life, our entire life, upon that. And uh, the miracle, it really is, is that from our hearts we believe that. I mean, that's not us. That's the Lord that is doing that inside of us. I want to just say thank you for our visitors here that have come to this, the, the last words of Christ. And our play this year was a little bit different in some ways. It was different in that it took several of the aspects about how Jesus impacts a person's life and then went, went looked at it through the perspective of di- different Bible characters using the last words that that Jesus said when he was on the earth, and even some at the resurrection. So it was a little bit different. It was, it was what you're supposed to pick up on is seeing how many different ways that Jesus impacts the life. This past year, probably more than ever, I want to be honest with you, I've met people who have given their life to Jesus Christ, whose lives have, lit- have literally changed. And uh, just that God is doing something completely new and different in their life. And it's all because of this real and powerful Jesus Christ who was Savior and was the resurrected Lord. It's very easy to think of Jesus Christ sometime as like a ticket uh, out uh, to heaven, out of hell and into heaven. And, and there's no doubt that that is true. But Christ is so much more than that. In being our Savior, that is the crux of everything. That's where the power comes from, of what he did there on the cross and by the resurrection. But not just a ticket, Jesus is so much more to us. Jesus and his gospel speaks to all areas of our lives. You may even use the word holistic. I know we use that in medicine or whatever. It's talking about something that, that uh, really just looks at every aspect or deals with every aspect of something. You know, Jesus isn't just our ticket that we accept him one day as our Savior and then put him in our pocket and then go through all the troubles of life and just have to make it and, you know, chin up kind of thing, hope it all works out for you and, oh, you're totally wretched and wrecked, whatever. Hope it, you know, you'll die someday and go to heaven. No, our Savior is so much more than that that he addresses every dark place, every problem, and every need of our life. I saw a post this morning uh, from a, a commentator named uh, Paul Tripp, an author, and he said, if Jesus is powerful enough to come up out of the grave, he is powerful enough to address every dark place in your life. That's the Savior we're talking about, not some kind of myth, not some kind of whatever uh, old thought in a book. Jesus' good news holds the answer to every problem of my life. If not now, then in the future. If he will not resolve those things that need to be resolved right now in my life, when I am with him face to face, they will be resolved. But make no mistake, Jesus is wholly the answer to your life because of his power in the gospel. Think of the different character, characters that we saw this morning, the paralyzed man, based on Father, forgive them. He experienced the power of, of Jesus to heal him. And you know what? If it is God's will, Jesus can still, still heal you. Many of you, this will not connect to you at all, but Ron Durham walked into our church this morning. All right? And that's huge. That's huge for us to know where he came from. And that's, Brother Ron, that's a great halfway, but someday the Lord is going to give you and going to give me a brand new body and complete the work that he has begun in you. Sometimes it is God's will that we suffer. Sometimes it is not Jesus' will to heal, but make no bones about it. He has the power to heal. He has the power to address everything in your life, big or small, suffering or sickness. Ultimately, He will receive all the glory when he gives us new bodies and makes everything new like that paralyzed man. And there is application to the verse, by his stripes we are healed. But that paralyzed man learned something better than getting his legs back, didn't he? He realized that Christ had a greater power 
to heal spiritual sin. He had the power to forgive his sins, which, which you know, getting your eyes off of this earth, that is so much greater than just getting your legs back. Jesus can forgive your sins because he has the power and the authority to forgive sins. He earned that power and authority by his death and resurrection. Jesus can forgive your sins because he himself took the penalty of those sins. There is no penalty waiting for you because he took the penalty on the cross. He rose up from the dead declaring, I am the champion with the power to justify any who will trust on me. They will not have to face the penalty for their sins anymore. Matthew, the disciple, a guy that you met, me, based on I thirst, Matthew received the courage to take the gospel to the world even though he would be persecuted for doing it. His fear was overcome in Jesus' love. That love is what caused him to be able to go forward. Perhaps you are here this morning and you are troubled with all kinds of discouragements, depressions, fears maybe of all types this morning. Can I point you to the one who cares about that? The one who cries with you? The one that will ultimately now or ultimately can make those things right? Can I point you to the fact that Jesus Christ wants to replace your fears with his love? That is the fulfillment of the verse that perfect love casts out all fear. And I am convinced that that is Jesus' perfect love that casts out every fear in my heart. The rich young ruler based on today thou shalt be with me in paradise. This this rich young ruler was self-righteous. He did not understand that all his goodness, his wealth, his reputation could not earn any standing with God, could not get him one inch closer to God, could not reconcile him to God, could not make God respect him. It was a free gift to be received simply by seeing the guilt of your sin like the thief on the cross and crying out for the mercy of Jesus Christ who is willing to give that away as a free gift salvation as a free gift literally nothing we can do literally nothing we need to do or we could do jesus has done it all we simply receive you know that's a hard thing for an american we're taught all our life that we work hard and we get something And I want to tell you, even for me, I grew up in the church. Even for me, many times I slip back into that law mode. I I slip back into that earn mode. No, Jesus has earned it all. It is offensive to try to give God something to receive eternal life. He gets it all, and so he gets all the glory. He gives it all, so he gets all the glory. John the Beloved, based on uh, Behold Thy Mother, John earned the compassion of Jesus to minister to people even during Jesus' own sacrifice. He learned the intimacy that Jesus wants to have with each of us and that blows my mind. Jesus the Lord wants to be intimate with me. He wants me to be his dear child. He wants to call me. Christ wants to call me brother and the answer is yes. It's craziness, but it's true. The adulterous woman, based on it is finished, this woman experienced what every one of us must that her, the bulk of her hideous sins that she should have answered for personally was finished when Jesus Christ accomplished the cross. It is finished. He was her substitute. He is our substitute. He satisfied God's wrath for us. He became, big $50 word, the propitiation that, that finished, that appeased, that satisfies God's wrath so that there's no more wrath waiting for us. It's been accomplished. It was quenched. However you want to, Jesus took the impact, however you want to think of it. And so Jesus might say, by legal authority of what he did, because he took the impact, he may say, neither do I accuse you. Are there any sweeter words in all the Bible? Are there any sweeter words that you would want to hear from God? Neither do I accuse you. So that being justified and freed by him, we might have a brand new heart And we might be able to do what he said for the lady to do. Go and sin no more. We have a changed heart that doesn't want, I don't want to do what Jesus saved me from anymore because Jesus changed my heart. He wrote his laws inside my heart. He changed me. He made me born again. James the lesser. I don't want to forget about him. That's a joke. Why are you troubled? James showed us that The risen Christ gives those who will believe on him a new identity in him. Not an identity of their own making. 
identity freely given by him. Forgiveness of sins, yes, but so much more. Jesus the Savior becomes Jesus your Lord and the purpose of your life. He came, he said, that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. And that life is not found in our own ambitions or how good we are or, or how we appear in reputation to others or how we are raised before others, whether greater or lesser, like James. It is found in knowing Christ. It is found in what he has made us. Royal children of God, friends of God, at peace with God, redeemed, forgiven, eternal life reserved in heaven, and so much the more. The truths shown by all these characters this morning and so many more truths found in your Bible offer us Jesus Christ who came to earth to open the door literally to a love relationship with God. He did it all. He opened the door. He is the Savior and he gets the glory. And that love relationship now with God because of the power of the cross and the resurrection that does real things in our life, it addresses holistically every area, every dark struggle, everything of our lives. And I want to ask you, I want to challenge you that you would put that to the test, that all of those things are answered in Jesus Christ. And that starts with taking him as your savior and having, removing the sin barrier between you and God. The scriptures talk about that good news this way, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, that's the word good news, Jesus' good news, which I preached unto you, which also you have received and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved. If you keep in memory, that just means hold fast what I've preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. For I de- and here's the good news. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again ac- the third day according to to the scriptures. By his death, his burial, and his resurrection, Jesus removed all the animosity which separated you from God. He he provided the opportunity to save you from the damnation of your life of sins, and by doing that, he opened the door to this love relationship with God that addresses ultimately every area of our life by the power of his cross and by the power of his resurrection. And I know that's a big claim, and I know that that takes faith to believe. But Jesus said it straight and clear. And he, he, didn't, uh, he didn't pause and he didn't look away. He just looked at people straight in the eyes and he said, come unto me. All you that labor and are heavy laden. And I'll give you rest. And take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly of heart. And ye shall find rest under your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And the invitation from you for all these characters and the music you two heard is that you would realize that all the claims of Jesus Christ historically are true. And his great work of being the savior of the cross and the champion of the resurrection has the power to radically change your life. Yes, give you a ticket to heaven, but that's just the starting place. Address all the areas of your life. Would you bow your heads, please, across the place?